Hi, Kenneth. I thought I would have my other phone set up so I can watch the chat, but um, so I can respond to any questions. I think it's gonna like time out on me. I'm not sure it's gonna stay on. You can hear me okay, Kenneth? I'm not sure it's gonna stay on. Oops, I better mute that. Hey, Shanna, thanks for coming. Happy Thanksgiving to you and to Kenneth. Can you hear me okay? Let me know if my volume is working. Loud and clear. Okay, I see it. Thank you, Kenneth. I'm not sure how many people will get today, but there may be a lot of people or maybe just some people that are like me and they're not busy and they want somebody to visit with. Thank you, Shanna. So we'll see if anybody comes. I'll just go along as if they're here and we'll see for a little while. So it says four people are here and I know who three of them are. There's, so there's one more that hasn't said hello yet. Let us know that you're here so we can greet you. And Shanna and Kenneth, are you both showing up with the blue wrench? I said it last night, so I'm hoping it worked. I'll show you guys what I'm working on. This is the pattern I'm doing. Hello to all that are watching. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Make a comment in the chat. Let us know you're here so we can say hello. So Shanna, what are you doing today? I know what Kenneth is doing. Tell me what your plans are. Whoops. Some problems. Something's not working right. Must have a knot inside here. You preparing your Thanksgiving meal? I was um, supposed to have Thanksgiving dinner. My son was supposed to come over. 
and then he found out I've got a knot inside here and I'm going to have to work this out. Then he found out that his boss is home with a fever and is getting tested for COVID today. And look at that, what was inside of there. Can you see that? No wonder it didn't work. And um, oh, what a mess. So we decided that it was best for him to just stay home until we get some answers. Wow. Never had this happen before. Good that it happens on camera so we can see together how to do it, how to fix it. My neighbor is outside with a leaf blower or something. Can you hear that or is it okay? All of that was knotted up inside there. I'm gonna put this back together, start over again. When you put the needle back in, there's a little tiny arrow right there and there's a little arrow right here and you Actually, it's on, no, that side says M for medium. That side has a little arrow, and you match those up, and then turn, and it locks it in. And there's a spring inside. You put that on like that. That was a little unexpected tutorial. But at least nothing got broken. Me and dad just got our Thanksgiving from our, what's the FC Deli? Paper Pest, hello. Haven't seen you in here before. Thanks for coming. Happy Thanksgiving. But not here, the leaf blower. Good. And my chat. I put up on my phone, my other phone, it's not even, work. oh, okay, Food City, yeah, I see it. Just finished lunch, no big dinner. Yeah, I'm by myself because my son's boss might have COVID, so we decided for him not to come over, and uh, I think I'm going to, I have some frozen salmon, and I think I'm going to cook that with some yellow squash and tomatoes and some greens and maybe some potatoes. And that will be my meal. And I think I'm gonna rent the movie The Long Long Trailer and watch it today. Yes, just learning needle punch. I've done many other kinds of embroidery. Okay, so do you have a, um, an ultra punch needle? Have you made any projects yet? Doing these little stars, they can a little tricky. I once lived in a trailer like the one in that movie. Um, so Paper Pest, I just did, I have another channel and Kenneth can put a link to it in the chat, if you will, Kenneth. It's called Camping Therapy. And I just posted a video yesterday of a camper that I toured at a vintage camper rally and it's exactly like, it's the same model as the camper in that movie. 
It's a 1953 new moon. So now that I've toured that camper in person, I mean, it's not the exact camper from the movie, but it, it's the same model. It's just like it. So now that I've actually seen that, I've only seen the movie once like a year ago, and now I want to watch it again. See how it compares to the one that I toured and did a video of. I'm working on my first one, but a boy needle first, a disaster. I've, I've always heard that. I have heard that they are junk, but the, I mean, the Ultra Punch is $26 and I sell them in my Etsy shop. And if you buy it from me, you also get a 12 by 15 piece of weaver's cloth to get you started. So then all you need is a pattern and some floss. So it's by the time you buy that and the hoop and everything, it's a lot of money to get started. So you kind of want to really make sure that you like it, which is hard to do without buying it. So if you have a friend that does it, or if you could take a class, but at the class, I've heard that some shops have needles for you to use before you buy them. Like you can use it for the class and make sure it's something that you like before you invest the money. But the needle makes all the difference and you just get frustrated with the cheap ones. From what I've heard, I've, I've never used one. Hi, Renee. Happy Thanksgiving to you. So do you have an Ultra Punch yet? Paper Past? I mean, it's the only one I learned on an Ultra Punch and this is the original needle and I've probably, I don't even know how long I've had it. It was in the early 2000s when I learned. I've had it a long time. Maybe the mid, I don't know, let me think. Maybe around 2002 or three, I think. That's how long I've had it. So like all the numbers and words are wore off it. And I do have another one that I keep a small needle tip in, but I rarely ever use it. But I have a backup. Yeah, Ultra Punch, thanks, Renee. Ultra Punch is the number one selling punch needle tool. And some people like the CTR, but the CTR, you only get one needle tip with it. So if you want to have all three sizes, you have to buy three different needles that are the price. Each one is the price of the Ultra Punch that you get all three needles with. Um, you know what I mean? Like if the CTR was $26, you're only getting one size needle tip. So you have to buy three at $26 to get the same thing that you get with Ultra Punch for just one $26, if that makes sense. I just, I like the Ultra Punch. Um, but from what I was saying is I've read in the groups when people buy the cheap needles, they just, they get frustrated. They want to throw it away. They want to quit. They don't want to do it anymore. And then I have taught classes. Last year I was teaching classes here in Pennsylvania. And somebody came in with the cheap one. And then they bought the Ultra Punch during the class and used it. And they said, it was like night and day that it was so much better. And the hoop is also important. You can't just use a regular embroidery hoop. And I've had students say the same thing. They come in with a regular embroidery hoop and they think that that's going to work, but it actually doesn't. So when they buy the Morgan hoop, they always say the same thing. What a world of difference because you just, you have to have it. Hear that drum sound? It has to be that tight. I'm actually using a gripper frame. The speediest at punch needle. I wish I was that fast. Thank you, Renee. You really just kind of get a rhythm. 
And I noticed where I'm slowest at, like right now, because I'm doing this little detail work where you have to kind of go slow. But also when I'm doing my first row around the edge, because I'm being so careful to try to get a straight line. So I go a little slower there. But once you get like going around here in the background, you can just cruise along. And in case you weren't here, this is the pattern I'm working on, Teresa Kogut. I do not have it in my Etsy shop, but I can tell you that Teresa Kogut is having a Black Friday sale tomorrow through Sunday, I think. And all her patterns are 25% off. So you definitely want to check out her Etsy shop this weekend. This is a very easy pattern. It's good for a beginner. I've done it before and it's just really simple. I don't have the one that I did because I sold it. So I can't show that to you. You finished the snowman. Yes, I did. And I actually kept it right here in case somebody asked. This is the snowman. I'm going to put it on a horn book, I think. I thought about putting it like on a hanging pillow and show that as an example of how to do the hanging pillows. Um, I'm not really sure yet. I might just put it on a horn book. But I want to do a video of how to do the pillow, how to make it into a pillow. And since I have that, that would work. And there's my stars. You have little strings sticking out, you just snip them off so that they're even with the other ones. I'm going to fix this one point right here because it doesn't look like it's very solid. So Paper Fest, um, Paper Pest, is it, right? Paper Pest, yeah. So if you um, look at my other videos, there's a lot of tutorial videos. He came out really cute, didn't he, Renee? So I did the same thing on that that I did on this. But, um, I just pull out my Valdani. I have a video I posted the other day on how I get started. And the patterns always have, you know, the thread colors that they use. But Teresa Kogut usually uses Weeks Dye Works, and then she has Conversion for DMC. She uses that also. But I use almost all Voldani because I have so much of it, and I love the variegated colors. So I just pull from what I have. I take that color picture and I sit with all my threads and then I pick my colors. Gotta go peel my turkey day potatoes. Thank you, Renee. Just seeing how you snip the thread. Yeah, I have um, in my video that is, is the getting started video. I put a link to these little scissors, an Amazon link. They're just Fiskars 4-inch. But I'll show you. They're curved. Can you see how curved they are? Just a little bit. But it lets you get right down to the fabric when you're snipping the threads. I used to use straight ones that I won in a giveaway one time and they were pretty expensive. But this is so much better to use these because you can get down further.
There's seven people in the chat. Say hello. Let us know who's here. We can say happy Thanksgiving. Let us know what you're doing today. Are you working on a project? Are you cooking dinner? Are you having company? Are you alone? Just say hello and let us know what's going on. Join in on the chat. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. The curve is what I need. I have a small embroidery scissors, but straight blades. That's what I used to use. I might have them. Yeah, I still have them. They're expensive ones, but I won them in a giveaway. So this is what I used to use. Ging Ginger, G I N G H E R. And there's our straight. Um, yeah, you can see they're just flat. I used to use those all the time. You can see all the color is like worn off. They used to be all blue. I've had them for many, many, many years. So they're good scissors. But for this, I like the curved better. Now, also for rug hooking, the curved ones work better. They're only, I think, seven or eight dollars for these curved ones that I'm using. Are you working on anything now, Paper Pest? Are you working on any patterns? It's a good weekend to stock up because Teresa Kogut's having that sale 25% off. And then Old Tattered Flag is having a sale. Their patterns are mostly bigger and that Sure. For beginners, I don't know. I like Teresa's patterns for beginners, so that's where we're at. Um, Old Tattered Flag is having a sale. So what are you working on? What pattern? Finished a rug hooking pattern from the old tattered flag. Oh, so you're not a beginner. You're just a beginner on punch needle. I did some rug hooking. I just found it was very expensive. A pattern from Doodle Dog. Yes, yeah, she has some cute patterns. I think hers are on sale too this weekend. Maybe I should put mine on sale too. I don't have that many left. I have some from the old tattered flag and Teresa Kogut and threads that bind. I just thought I would try that and see if they sold well. And they're kind of slow selling. I don't know that I will get any more. Bought a few punch needle completed pieces from a friend. That's what got me interested in that. Yeah, so how I got started, I went into um, the pattern hut in Pigeon Forge. And... 
there was somebody demonstrating it there and they gave me class. I need to pull out a different color. I didn't pick a color for my lettering. This is my greens and blues. And I need a solid green. What I have out is variegated. I want to do the letters in a solid. I also double my threads I'm using number eight Valdani. What I was just using in the red was three strand Valdani. The floss, this is pearl cotton. The red was three strand Valdani and I always double it. It looks like somebody else just came into the room here. Say hello in the chat. Let us know you're here. We can say happy Thanksgiving to you. When you're doing lettering, you want the punches to be really close together. And it usually looks kind of funky until you punch in all around it and then it makes sense. But you need it to be thick and you need it to be close together. Or it won't show up right. Kenneth, the turkey dinner that you had, is it like all the traditional fixins? Do they have it already made up for you or do you have to go and tell them what you want in it? Paper Pest, do you have a gripper frame from doing the rug hooking? I've been using Q snaps. Oh yeah, that that's not gonna work good. So I make my own gripper frame. I think Doodle Dog Primitives has a video on how she did hers. I'm gonna do a video, I just haven't done it yet. But there are YouTube videos about how to make your own. I would highly recommend the gripper frame instead of the Morgan hoop but if money is the object then go with the Morgan hoop um, Morgan hoops are not cheap either but you can get them 
on Joanne Fabrics online and use a coupon. But if if you ask anybody that's used both, they're going to tell you they like the gripper frame better. And then the gripper frame would also work for your rug cooking. Potatoes are in the oven. Happy Thanksgiving. Paper pest. Renee, Richie. Sounds good. I love potatoes. Shannon, do you do any crafting? Because that is your name, so you should do crafting. You have a coupon. Yeah, Morgan Hoop will get you started. I'm going to show you what I made without taking my cover off here. This is an, my larger gripper frame. And all it is is the, um, I guess, can you see right here? They call them stretcher bars. And then I, they come in different sizes. And I bought this at a thrift store for a dollar. And then the gripper strips I get on Etsy, it's called Howard Brush Company. And you get a 40 inch strip for, with tax and shipping, I think it was 26 or $27. So then you cut it into the size pieces that you want for your frame and just staple it on. And you can see the grips. Wait a minute. Everything's backwards here. You can see the little grippers. The teeth. And that will hold your fabric jump tight. So really for what I paid for that, if you just get a flat frame at Goodwill or something, even or look for the canvas, a painted canvas at Goodwill and just rip the canvas off and use the frame. I mean, it's probably going to be just as much as if you bought the Morgan hoop and you're going to have a better. A better frame. As long as you are willing to work with those teeth and make your own. I married a craft. I've dabbled in cross stitch and acrylic painting. I haven't done either in quite a while. Yeah, you got to live up to your name, girl. Isn't that what they say? I can't do cross stitch anymore, but it is super, super popular. I mean, I can do it. I shouldn't say I can't do it. I just choose not to. It's just too tedious for me to try to sit there and count all those little squares and get over to where I want. And then I'd be afraid I mess up and have to rip it all out. This is so much easier. This is just like coloring in the lines, but you use floss to color with. I have a canvas piece with a frame that I bought at a dollar store, so need to get started. Yeah, order that. Um, it, it's supposed to be seconds on Etsy, the, the gripper strips, but personally, I mean, I've ordered it three different times because I have different size frames, and I can see nothing wrong with it, so I don't know what's wrong, but it's called Howard Brush Company. I think he also sells on Amazon. If you'd rather buy it there. And it was either, like I said, with tax and shipping, because I think it's $20 for 40 inches. And then you have to pay the shipping and the tax. And it was either $26 or $27. And Kenneth, it comes with all the fixings two pounds of dressing and two pounds of potatoes and one pound of gravy and some yeast rolls. Well, you guys are going to be eating good. How many meals will that be for you, Kenneth? Shanna Crafts, you know Kenneth, right, from the RV community? He's going to be, him and Papa are going to be at Mayberry next year. And I got to meet them 
the weekend after Mayberry in Tennessee. And Kenneth graciously volunteered to be a moderator for me, even though he has no interest really in punch needle probably, but he said he would moderate for me and watch for trolls. I appreciate that Kenneth and I appreciate you too, Shanna, for coming over and helping out. So I have a hot mess here, you see, all these little threads that I'm going to cut off because I jumped from one over to the other and then just cut it all at one time. I probably shouldn't be showing this as much as I have been because of copyright. There's not really any way around that when I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. So yeah, with these scissors, you get right down there and get this all cleaned up. Does anybody have their Christmas decorations up yet? It doesn't look like much, but it will once I get all the surrounding filled in. Do some black. You do not have yours up yet, Shanna. So yesterday I went into Goodwill. I was actually looking to see if they had a little small, small kitchen table. And they didn't. And I found out that they don't sell large furniture. So they had some chairs, but they didn't have any tables. Um, but what I walked out with was a four foot Christmas tree. Fully decorated on a stand for $6.99. So I'll show you. It's a mess. It's just, let me pull this cord. Do you see that little tree? So that's going to be my Christmas tree. I wasn't going to put one up at all. It still has all the stuff just hanging on it because I just stuck it up on that table to see what it would look like. Um. But I have only handmade ornaments is what I put on my tree. So I have a bunch of really neat ones. I'll have to do a video of that once I get it up and decorate it. But I wasn't going to decorate. I wasn't going to decorate at all. But then I saw the deal on the tree and I changed my mind. It doesn't look like much now, but it will when I'm done. It even has lights on it and they work. I may put up my little ceramic tree my mom made in the 70s. You know, my mom has a few of those in her basement. I told her, I said, don't give them away, mom, because they're worth a lot of money now. Because hers are like yours. They're the originals. Hey, Spaceman Dudley. Can you explain for the uneducated on this? Is that ink or thread? It is thread. I have a ball of thread. It's weird how everything's backwards on this. <laughs> so the thread goes through this needle. 
and it makes a loop <coughs> on the other side. So I'm actually working on the back. This is the wrong side, and that's the right side. So I'll show you one that I did last week. So this is the wrong side, and that's the right side. So then this will get folded back, and I'm either going to put it on a board or make it into a little pillow. This is what I'm making today. And this one will go on a board. The turkey will probably last about two weeks because we are going to make turkey dumplings and turkey pot pie. That sounds good. Happy Thanksgiving, Spaceman Dudley. So what are you doing today? And this is called punch needle embroidery because you punch, 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 punch. And as I punch, it makes loops. Spaceman Dudley, did you say you live in Tennessee, right? Are you, we're at in Tennessee? You're not in Pigeon Forge, right? I'm just referring back to the picture to see where I'm supposed to outline. Bristol, that's right, I remember. Are you having a turkey dinner today, Spaceman Dudley? So you're not too far from Kenneth in Kingsport, right? I'm jumping around on this because I'm doing all one color and then I move on to the next color. So I have it marked which color goes where. 35 minutes. Yeah, you're close. You might want to run over their house and get some of them turkey dumplings. What's Paul doing today, Kenneth? No hot sauce. Yeah. Kenneth puts hot sauce on everything. You want to know what to get him for Christmas? Just get him a case of hot sauce.
I do. I have designed some patterns. Mostly, I don't. I use other people's patterns. And I have quite a collection. I have a lot that I've not even done yet. And then I bought a new one yesterday for Thanksgiving, which I won't make until next year. But I liked it, so I bought it. And then I'll have it ahead of time for next year. Everything he said it tastes is a 10. I'd say Kenneth Oaks loves food. You get some weird stuff to eat, Kenneth. Stuff I never heard of. So Paper Pest, Kenneth has a channel and he does a lot of taste testing of really weird hot foods. I mainly just use cayenne pepper when I want hot stuff. Yeah, ask Kenneth about the hot stuff. I don't like hot stuff. But he eats a lot of hot stuff. Oh, this is moving right along. Getting done pretty quick. I like quick, simple patterns, but sometimes you want to do something a little more complicated. Um. Yeah, I don't even like peppers. I don't like onions and I don't like peppers. When I buy salsa or picante sauce, I buy it mild. And I know it has peppers in it, but it doesn't taste like peppers. My mom used to make stuffed peppers where she'd put the ground beef inside them. And she'd always make some separate for me that was just the ground beef without the peppers because I just don't like them. Seven people in the chat here, or seven people watching. Say hello in the chat. Let us know that you're here. So we can say happy Thanksgiving to you. I thought you were a country girl. Don't like onions and peppers. Oh, my. I grew up in the suburbs of Philadelphia. We had three acres, but I guess it was country. But And we had horses and chickens and cats, lots of cats. So I guess I grew up a country girl. I don't know. But you know what? I don't know how to can. I don't know how to make homemade gravy. I open a packet and I add water. I've never done any canning. I just never learned all that stuff. But uh, Mama didn't teach me because Mama didn't really do it. The only thing I've seen her do canning is I've seen her make jelly. And she made... I think it was apple butter 
but she made it in a crock pot. And that was when I was an adult, not a child. So I just didn't grow up with all that stuff. You were born in central Philadelphia and now in the Bronx. And I'm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. So we're not too far apart. My son was in New York City last weekend. He said there was hardly anybody there. He went to Central Park for the first time. He said it was like being in a forest. You didn't feel like you were in the city at all. And their $300 hotel room was $86, I think he said. It was 80 something. I guess they, they're just really hurting and they're just trying to get people in there. And the hotel was right near Central Park. Strawberry freezer jam. Never had it. It's a special time to be in the city. Great not to have to push through crowds. Yeah, he said that like it was kind of hard to not social distance because there wasn't hardly anybody there. But when they went um, into a restaurant, they took their name and their address and their phone number for contact tracing in case they or somebody else that was there got COVID so that they could notify them. But he, uh, his girlfriend lives in Philadelphia and he goes there like every weekend. And he said he felt better, safer, COVID wise, or maybe just all in general. But he, he said he felt safer in New York than he did, than he does when he goes to Philly. And I've heard that like many thousands of people have left New York City. My mom is a country girl, married an Air Force man, had five kids, and I don't recall her canning. She did not make good gravy, though. Oh, she did make good gravy. I tried a couple times, not good. She, my mom would make gravy sometimes. I just never learned how. I think she would add cornstarch to it and make it thicker. I just never learned how. I just would open a jar of gravy or the little packets of the powder and add water. I don't even know the last time I made gravy though. I'm just cooking for me. I don't get that fancy. Thank you, Shanna. Yeah, please hit the thumbs up. So I just had a giveaway last week. I reached 500 subscribers and now it's almost 700. And when I get to a thousand, I'll do another giveaway. But I got a shout out from Teresa Kogut, which was super fantastic of her to do that. Help me out. And, um, I shared it on Facebook that I was having a giveaway. So I got a lot of new subscribers and I appreciate every one of them. So I gave away four prizes. One of them actually paper pest was a hoop, was a Morgan hoop. I gave away four prizes and they have all been claimed and shipped out. They had a week to claim them and they all claimed them. So now my sheep has a little face. Looking cute. People leaving California also just hope they don't bring what they're fleeing from with them if they move to Tennessee. Yeah, I think they're like the people in New York are kind of heading this way and stuff just to get, get out of the city. So they're going to the suburbs. I mean, I'm about an hour from Philadelphia. My dad actually, we're very happy people. Yeah, I hope so. My dad actually worked at the Philadelphia airport. That's where he retired from. And we lived about 
20 minutes from there. We were near Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania, if you've heard of that. Right across the Delaware state line. So paper pest, what I'm using now is DMC, but it's DMC pearl cotton and it comes in a roll, which this one's almost empty. It's cheaper than Valdani, but you won't get the variegation that Valdani has. A lot of gangs in Philly. Yeah, my son said he like hears gunshots and stuff, and he's got some kind of app on his phone that tells him like when crimes happened, and it's like he said it's like notifying all the time when he's in Philly that something's happening near where he is. His girlfriend goes to Temple University, and so she's, I don't know, I think he's in like a block or two from like some really, really bad areas, but she's near the college. Okay, so the name of Privies and Prims, years ago when I first started having a little shop, I wanted to decorate my bathroom with outhouse themed decorations and there weren't any you couldn't find any then like now you can but then you couldn't this was like back in 2001 2002 maybe so I started making things with outhouses on them to sell and I would get like wooden toilet seats and I had a wood burner. I actually still have it. And I would wood burn an outhouse with like flowers and grass and stuff seen on it and sell the toilet seats. And I sold them on eBay. And I sold several of them. And then like I would just get like old um like the old hospital urinals, the, the white enamel ones, and I would paint like an outhouse scene on the inside so you could like hang it up on the wall in your bathroom. I got some blank heavy cotton shower curtains and painted big outhouse scenes on them with a dog sitting outside the outhouse. So anyway, that's how the, the privies came along because privies is another word for outhouses. And then the prims is for primitives which is the style of um, decorating that I like. So my dad used to make birdhouses and he would use like license plates for the roofs, old doorknobs for the perches. And they were really, really rustic. Some of them were a couple hundred dollars. They were really big and made out of old barnwood. So originally my business was privies and perches, perches being the birdhouses. Then he stopped making birdhouses and went into furniture. Started making furniture out of old barnwood. So I changed it to privies and prims to fit what I was making. And that's how the name's there. Been true around the neighborhood around Temple University for a long time. Yeah. We used to return to Philly to play in chess tournaments. The Hotel Adams Mark has been torn down. Mama House Restaurant. Parking lot is full. Never heard of that place, Kenneth. I guess a lot of people don't want to cook. Now it has a little hat. Do the sheet. We have ten people in here. Please say hi in the chat. Let us know who's here. Join in on the conversation.
And thank you for coming and happy Thanksgiving. Don't be shy. Just say hello. Nobody will hurt you. I promise. Those that came in later, this is what I'm working on. Teresa Kogut pattern. My mom told me some outhouse stories and I've actually used an outhouse before. I thought you were talking, I saw good rolls and I thought you were talking about outhouses. Thought maybe you meant toilet paper. Yeah, I've used an outhouse. I actually did a whole bunch of photographs of outhouses and I don't know if I still have those pictures or not. I was going to do a calendar. You know, where you can order them online, you send them the pictures and they make a calendar. But I thought they were too expensive and nobody would have bought them. But maybe they would have, I don't know. They were local outhouses from North Carolina. I even had a picture of two different ones that were perched over a creek. They just had logs underneath them and whatever went down the hole went down the creek. And then when I went back to see the one again, it had fallen, kind of collapsed, and it was partway in the creek. But that's how they did it. You didn't want to be down the creek from people. And that particular house, you had to drive through the water. It was a really small little creek, and you had to drive through it like to get to the house. The driveway went right through the creek. So I guess that's like where the saying came in, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Because if the creek rose, they couldn't get out to go anywhere. Let me see if somebody new, M.A., hello, happy Thanksgiving to you. My reminder didn't go off, so I am late to the party. We canned tomatoes and peaches and froze strawberries. We went to the farms and picked our own during using wooden baskets. Yeah, can you put my order in? Yeah, he wants some of that good food. That sounds delicious. We didn't do any of that stuff. I guess we were more like city people. The key to making good gravy is make sure the meat juices are bubbly hot and combine slowly with cold water cornstarch or cold water flour. That sounds like what my mom did. The only time that I make gravy now is like if I was having like a hamburger patty and I wanted the brown gravy to make it like a Salisbury steak. But I'm not supposed to eat the red meat anymore. So now I make turkey burgers. And I don't make any of the gravy. I usually cook it with vegetables. Mom grew up on a farm in South Dakota, but he grew up in Minnesota. I've never been to either place. Can you all still hear me okay? I'm actually talking into the phone that's over here, and I realize I should be talking into this phone. Because I'm reading the chat on the other phone. I never had a veggie burger. I just eat a lot of chicken and turkey and sometimes fish. I am eating the meat that's still in my freezer because I've only been doing this for a little over a month. So I have a couple steaks in my freezer that I need to eat. I should have had one of those today. Can you hear me fine? My name is Marjorie. Well, hello, Marjorie, and welcome. I didn't know if anybody would come today. I thought everybody might be busy, but 
Not everybody has family around. I am by myself today, which is okay with me. Just another day. I can still give thanks, even if I'm by myself, and I can still eat good. One thing I don't like is going around lettering. It's just all the little detail here. So sometimes I do what I'm going to do today. I fill all this in and then I can just go around it. One bite one time and it felt like I was chewing that it was growing. <laughs> No veggie burgers. I don't know. I don't really get the point of it. Last Thanksgiving, I was invited to someone's house from church. And the guy had a to tofu. It was like tofu turkey. And I said, well, why to eat it then? Because, like, if it's not real turkey, like, why eat it? He said, well, it's like a mental thing. Then you feel like you had Thanksgiving dinner. Tofu. To, 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 I, I can't even pronounce the name of it. It was like something with tofu and turkey in the name. Good and plenty. Good and plenty here in Lancaster. Tofurky. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, always do the details first. Because if you do the other part first, it, the details can get lost. So I always do the details first. I do the background last, my least favorite part. Marjorie, do you do punch needle? Are you working on any project? By myself, I'm so thankful for so many things, I like running hot water, as well as all my family and friends. Funny you should say that, because last Saturday, I realized I didn't have any hot water. So I let my apartment manager know, which is a realtor. My landlord is Amish. He doesn't want to deal with his tenant, so he hires this realtor to manage it for him. So I emailed her and let her know Saturday evening that I just realized I didn't have any hot water. And she said that she would let the landlord know. So then I went to get a shower because I had reset the circuit breaker, which I've had to do a few times. So that is what I just said. I had to go down again and reset the circuit breaker. So she said, okay, I'll let him know. So then later that night I went to get a shower thinking that since I reset the circuit breaker, that now it would work. And it didn't. And I didn't have any hot water. So I emailed her again and just said, it's not working this time. I don't have hot water. So she said, well, I can't let him know until Monday. Because, you know, the Amish don't work on Sundays. But I think this was kind of a different situation. I mean, I don't have any hot water. So it's like, fine, I'll just pretend I'm camping and I skip a day with my shower. It's not 100 degrees out. So then Monday morning, late morning, I emailed and said, do you know when the electrician's coming? She said, no, I'm waiting to hear. And then Monday later that day, I said, do they realize I haven't had hot water in two days? Yes, they do. They're supposed to come at 3 o'clock. Well, 3 o'clock came and went. Nobody came. So he finally came, I think, like, after 5, the electrician came. And he had to replace two breakers. And he was like, why didn't they let the owner know? And I said, because they don't bother him on Sunday. And I'm not supposed to bother him because that's why they hire the realtor. And he said, well, then they need to do their job. 
and he was not happy. So I think he probably went back and told the owner about the apartment manager knowing on Saturday and not telling him until Monday. But the apartment's being sold anyway, so it doesn't matter. They're not going to do anything. Good and plenty. Yes, I have done a few. Self-taught. I don't know all the tips and tricks. Have you ever changed the height of the loops with a pattern such as the background? I have. I have changed the height of the loops. I don't think I've done it on the background, though. I would do it of the design, not the background. It does make a big difference. Like the one time I did a pattern, I think it's threads that bind and it has a sheep with like lavender flowers in the field. And I did the flowers, the not the stems and everything, but just the blooms. I did them at a higher loop and it made them stand out more. So you can see how I'm filling all that in. And then I can just kind of go around and I have to keep doing all this little zigzagging. I just get it over with, get it out of the way. So on my last video, I talked about a stocking that I made and I pulled it out so I can show you. This is one of my favorite pieces. You see that? That is um, with the needle and thread pattern. It's all done in blues. And then I have a blue wool on the back. And just these are just stuck in there. That's one of my favorite pieces. And it has a little loop so you can hang it. Bye, Paper Pass. Thanks for coming in. I saw one of your videos where you drew lines on the background to get more variegation. That was very helpful. It does help a lot, and it keeps it from getting boring. And you don't just get, like, straight lines. I'm always looking for ideas of what you guys want me to do videos of. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Faith Man Dudley, you signing off? Oh, he's not leaving. He's saying bye to Paper Pass. Um, let me see. I've been disappointed in my backgrounds. They don't have the variation and flow like your snowman stocking. And all it is, and I'm going to show you again, is just take a Sharpie or a pen and just go like that. Just random little things and just follow those lines. Instead of going up and down and up and down and up and down like that, do some swirls. And that'll help a lot. Some of the variations are a lot stronger than others. The one I'm doing now is very subtle. As you can see. Let's see. Might be too bright to show you, but hold on. Yeah, there. So it's very subtle, it's not real strong. And then some other ones I have are really super strong. And I actually have a green. Let me see, pull that out and show you. And I never use it because of that, because it's not, it's not very subtle at all. 
I don't hardly ever use this one. Can you see that? So that is like a real strong variation. And then this one isn't as much. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. But I like the more subtle variation. It's just enough to give it some movement instead of having harsh lines. If you get the DMC variegated ones, they're really strong. I didn't like those at all. I didn't buy them. I think they have some new ones, but I haven't seen them yet. But I know the ones they had in the old days. They were not to my liking at all. I like Voldani the best because of the variegations. DMC has some pretty colors, but you don't get the variegation. And I like the variegation. Like like this sheep, it would look kind of boring if it was just all cream colored. But now it's going to have some variations in the color. And I know Teresa uses um, Weeks Dye Works, like the uh, over dyed threads. So you can see in her sheep, the variegation in there and in the green and in the reds. So she's using over dyed threads for that. I think it's a lot more expensive to do that than it is to use the Valdani. I think they're like 275 for a skein and it only comes in five yards. And the Valdani Pearl Cotton comes in 72 yards for $5. So Valdani is a lot cheaper. More expensive than DMC but cheaper than using the flosses. Um, I don't buy the three strand Valdani. It's only 27 yards. And the pearl cotton is 72, I think. It's a ton more thread. Huge difference. The three strands that I have, like this dark red was three strands. And the only reason I have that is because I did a project for somebody and they sent me the threads to do it in. And then whatever's left over, I get to keep. So that's what that's from. But I do not buy three strands. I buy the pearl cotton. This is number eight pearl cotton. I weaved you know I think I weaved in high school I think we did some weaving but that was it because I took a lot of art classes in high school and college um, it's pearl cotton p-e-a-r-l-e -E. and I buy it from snowflake memories I have a link to that in one of my videos, but I'm not, it might be the one that said getting started that I just posted last week um, or the beginning of this week, whenever it was, it might be in the, just when I post a video, there's a description underneath it. And in that description is where I put links at, like for the scissors, for the, um, this tray that I have that I use here, I put a link there. But if you look up Snowflake Memories Valdani, if you Google it, it'll come up. And that's where I buy my thread from. And they usually ship like the next day or the same day. They're really quick.
And I buy number eight pearl cotton, which is probably comparable to six strands of DMC. Yeah. Let me see. I'm going to type this in my other account. C E R L E. No, right. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I spelled it wrong. Is it? Which one is it? Let me hold on a minute. I'm going to look it up for you. I'll get the link. I think it's P-E-A-R-L-E. -E. Just give me a minute. There you go. Okay. Do you have that link now? Is it showing up? Okay, you got it. Marjorie got it. Okay, two said it didn't show and one said thank you. So let me know. The other thing I've learned is that it's itching way too close. Yeah, if you go too close, the, you'll push the other ones out and it'll the rows will blend together. Is the link there now? Because I'm seeing it on my end. Not seeing the link. Okay. Oh, maybe I have to make myself a moderator. Hold on a minute. Maybe I can do it here. Post comment. Give me a minute. Okay, did that work? I guess if I'm gonna do it this way on the other phone, I have to make my other channel a moderator. Oh, I put a space between snowflake and memories. So that has to be all as one word and then it should work. Can you try it, Kenneth, for me? Type it in the right way and see if you can get a working link.
I had the words all right. It's just I put it space between snowflake and memory. If you take that space out, it should work. Bye, Spaceman Dudley. Have a great day. Don't eat too much. Don't forget to be thankful. So many things we take for granted. Thank you, Kenneth. Marjorie, let me know if that works for you. Didn't work. Huh. Oh, I think it's. There's a dot between memories and E crater. There has to be a dot there. Hey, Joe Baker, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving to you. Here's what I'm working on today. Teresa Kogut. And Teresa has all of her patterns on sale this weekend, 25% off. That's a good time to stock up. Doesn't do that too often. I think it starts tomorrow and goes until Sunday. Okay, did you find it, Marjorie? There we go. Is that working, Kenneth? What's Joe Baker doing today? Are you working on anything? Unfortunately for your wallet, yeah. It's not making it a clickable link. Might need the www in front of it. Oh, you left the W out of snow out of the snow, Ken. It's okay. She got it. It's fine. She found it. If I make myself a moderator, then I can I could have just copied and pasted it. 
So I'll have to do that for future live stream. But it's okay, Kenneth, because she found the website. Now she's going to spend a ton of money. Because no matter how much you buy, you still find something that you don't have and you need to buy more. It's like fabric. Here's my progress, guys. Looking cute. Turkey in the oven. So what are you having with your turkey dough? What kind of desserts are you having? That's what we want to know about. Not the veggies. We want to know about the desserts. I went out and I bought the food because my son was going to come, but now he's not. And I didn't buy any dessert. Chocolate pie. You know what I love that chocolate cream pie? It's Hershey's, I think. I think it's Edmonds is the brand. And it's like Hershey's chocolate cream pie or something. I've forgotten all about that. It is so good. I took it to my friends for Christmas last year and it was a big hit. So I get a little bored when I'm doing a big area of the same color. That's my confession for the day. And I still have to do all of this in the same color. So drawing those little squiggly lines helps you to not get bored because it breaks it up a little bit. Pumpkin crunch. Wow. Tell us about that. Never heard of it. Yeah, it is Edwards, Joe. What is pumpkin crunch? Is it like a casserole, like sweet potato casserole with the nuts on top? Is that what it's like? When I used to go to a church Thanksgiving dinner, this one lady, the pastor's mom, always made. This was in North Carolina, so that's why I say used to. I don't live there anymore. But she always, we looked for her sweet potato casserole every year because she would put the brown sugar, like, stuff on top with the crushed nuts. And it was, oh my gosh, it was so good. I always looked for hers. I think they put marshmallows on top, too. Melted marshmallows. Paula Deen's gooey pumpkin cake. Never heard of that either. Well, I'm missing out. Hey, there's a Paula Deen's restaurant in Pigeon Forge, isn't there, Kenneth? Have you been there? I have one of those cake mixes. It's like, it just makes a little tiny round cake. So it's just like the yellow cake mix with the chocolate icing. Maybe I'll make that and then I'll have some dessert. But it won't hurt me if I don't. I get enough sugar. Tell us about these desserts, girls. Describe them to us. What is a gooey pumpkin cake? And what is pumpkin crunch? What do you have for dessert, Kenneth?
Um, what I'm doing here is moving these threads out of the way because like some kind of crossed over. So I just close my scissors real tight and move it. Push the green where it's supposed to be. So I can see it. There's a little fuzz on the top. I'm going to snip that off. Let's see. It's a dessert pumpkin puree, evaporated milk, sugar mixed together, pour in a pan, dry yellow cake mix on top. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Cream cheese, eggs, powdered sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg. They both sound amazing. I won't make them because I'm by myself and it would go bad before I ate it. So. I will just live through you and let you eat it. Like sometimes when I want cake, I'll go in the grocery store and over in the bakery, you can get like one, you know, like one square piece of like birthday cake. And I just get that and eat it in a couple different I try to like split it and eat it in two different times and it takes care of my craving and I don't have a whole cake to worry about that I'm going to eat the whole cake. I just eat that piece and then I'm done. And it might be a couple months before I decide I want more. And that's how I limit the portions. You're going to share with friends. Yeah, that's good. My mom makes cakes and stuff, and she's by herself, and I'm like, who's going to eat it all? But she wants cakes, so, or she'll see desserts, and she'll follow the recipes, and she'll make it. And sometimes she'll give some to her neighbors. I don't need to eat it anyway, so it's best that I don't make it. I limit my sugar. Because I drink sweet tea all day. And if I had to choose where my sugar was going to come from, I'd stick with my sweet tea. And give up desserts. All right, guys, I think I'm going to sign off here. We're down to four people. And I've been on for almost two hours. An hour and 39 minutes. So I'm going to sign off. Y'all can go and have some great food by the sounds of it. Remember to be thankful. There are some other people going live today um, in the RV community. I know forever, forever best friend is um, doing a marathon live. I don't know if she's still on. For those that don't know her, it's fur, like the animal fur. She's all about dogs. Forever best friend um, was doing marathon live and burning up the roads. B-U-R-N-I-N, no G. Burning up the roads that she was also going to do live today. So check them out. Um, and have a great day. So there's my progress. Got all that done. This is what I'm making. Don't forget, Teresa Kogut's having a sale this weekend. 25% off in her Etsy shop. And I'll see you all next time. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Kenneth and Shanna, for coming in. And bye, Joe. And bye, Marjorie. Thanks for coming in. And I will talk to you all later.
See you next time. Bye.